Hello students. We are going to be doing a poem from your treasure trove. This poem is called After Blenheim and it has been written by Robert Southey. The poem After Blenheim makes us ponder, ponder means think, on the purpose and result of a war and also questions its validity. Means, you know, after you read the poem, after you understand it, you begin to ask yourself, do we really need to get into a war? Do countries really need to fight when there's so much of devastation, so much of loss of life and property? What is the benefit? What is the gain of fighting a battle? This particular battle that they talk about in after Blenheim in this poem caused huge devastation and thousands of casualties. There are three main characters in the poem. Old Casper is the grandfather and two of his grandchildren are there in the poem. The boy called Peterkin and the granddaughter called Wilhelmin. Old Casper seems to have an unconcerned attitude towards the huge losses of the war as he claims that it was a famous victory and that things like that must be. He represents the common man which means he speaks for the common people, people who don't really understand the politics behind a war, people who unquestioningly accept the death and destruction caused by war as something that must be. His gruesome descriptions followed by his casual sayings create an effect of irony. Irony means sarcasm. It is ironic that it was a great war, but no one knows why it is being referred to as great. Nobody understands the greatness behind the death and destruction. <clears throat> the style used by the poet is a conversation between two people of very different ages. The old age the, represented by the grandfather Caspar and the younger age represented by the grandchildren. The younger age also represents vigor, innocence. Vigor means energy, innocence, restlessness and curiosity. Whereas the old age depicts experience, knowledge, acceptance and passivity. Passivity. We begin the poem with stanza 1. The poem begins by picturizing a vivid scene of a summer evening. It is the time when most people return from work. The days are long and tiring in summers and the sun sets late in the evening. We all know that summer days are long. An elderly farmer, they are talking about Casper, the grandfather who is also the main character of the poem named Casper, sits in front of his cottage watching his grandchildren, Wilhelmine and Peterkin, playing in the lush green lawn. Stanza 2 As Wilhelmine was playing, she saw her brother Peterkin rolling something large, smooth and round, something which he had found beside the river. Meanwhile, Caspar was sitting around observing his actions. Whose actions? Peterkin's actions. Out of curiosity, Peterkin takes that something, that large, smooth and round something to his grandfather wanting to know about it. Stanza 3 Grandfather Caspar took that round thing from the boy. Peterkin. Peterkin brought it to him to find out what it was and he was left in anticipation. The boy did not get an answer from his grandfather yet. After a brief look at it, the old man shook his head with a sigh and declared that it was the skull of some poor fellow which refers to a soldier who had died in the war, in the battle of Blenheim, in the great victory. It is ironic that he refers to the Battle of Blenheim as a great victory, even if it was at the cost of human lives. Stanza 4 The Battle of Blenheim led to the death of thousands of soldiers whose corpses, corpses means dead bodies, lay scattered in the field. Further, Caspar relates how he had found 
many such objects while ploughing the fields. The dead bodies of these soldiers lay in the fields unnoticed and uncared for. Nobody wanted to claim those dead bodies. However, Caspar's use of the term great victory expresses his pride at the sacrifice of the soldiers who played a vital role, an important role in the war. The great victory refers to the triumph, the victory in the battle, which also happens to be an example of sheer patriotism. Caspar believed that the soldiers sacrificed their life for the country and did not die in vain. Their death served the purpose of victory in the battle. Stanza 5 Hearing, on hearing about the battle, the children were restless to know more about it. Obviously, we understand that children are curious. They want to know everything about everything. So when they heard their grandfather talking about the battle, they wanted to know more about it. They had associated a sense of thrill, adventure and excitement with the idea of war and sacrifice. Because they were children, they really did not understand the real meaning of a war, the real, uh, you know, the grief behind death and destruction. For them, the battle seemed to bring thrill and excitement along with certain amazement. Little Wilhelmin was so curious to know about the war and the reason behind it that it reflected in her eyes, gleaming for a wonder to unfold, a mystery to unfold. The poet reflects upon the curiosity and enthusiasm associated with young age. The ability to question things is a peculiar quality of kids which fades away with growing age. Children have this habit of constantly asking questions because they want to know everything about everything. Now here we see an alliteration in this stanza with wonder waiting eyes. Alliteration is when consecutive words begin with the same consonant sound. WWW here with wonder waiting eyes. Stanza 6. History books tell us that the British defeated the French and the Bavarian army. Bavarian means from Bavaria, which is a state in southern Germany, in the Battle of Blenheim. Caspar, the grandfather, tries to answer the questions posed by his grandchildren by telling them this piece of information. The interesting point to note here is he doesn't know the reason behind the war. In fact, he doesn't even try to find out what it is. He remembers what everybody told him and that the victory was famous and he repeated it to himself again and again and put some belief in the words. So he's blindly believing in what he has heard. He has never bothered to find out what really happened in the war. Stanza 7 at this point in the poem, at this juncture in the poem means at this point in the poem after Blenheim, Caspar the grandfather recollects, remembers from the past some of the scenarios of the war. He begins by remembering his father who lived in a small village of Blenheim near a river. The French wreaked havoc in the village and burnt homes of several innocent people to the ground. Havoc means devastation, destruction. Consequently, the villagers were forced to migrate in search for shelter. Young Caspar, along with his parents, fled to a different place but could not find a home because of the impending war. Impending war because of the war that was going on. They had to roam from one place to another seeking shelter as they became homeless. Stanza 8 in the above stanza of After Blenheim, the poet describes the finer aspects of war. Fire and sword are symbols of human cruelty and destruction. They represent destruction, death and horror. Wasted is an emotionally charged word. It brings up an image of a land made barren, devoid of purpose and dignity. It shows both the futility of war, futility means uselessness of war, and its power to destroy. The image of mother and baby killed in war here makes us see battle as a catastrophic end to both 
present and future. It powerfully evokes the death of innocence. The idea is to express how thousands of innocent lives are taken in due course of a futile and meaningless war that is sure to bring only damage and destruction. The irony in the poem is made evident by Casper as he says that these things are meant to happen at every battle where there is a great victory. Whether he believes it or not, Casper has, has resigned to the inevitability of death. That's why he takes those killings casually and thinks it must be there at every such victory. Famous victory is intentionally repeated by the poet to create a sense of irony. We come to stanza 9 of the poem. The poet through Casper goes on to describe the agony of war. He mentions the shocking sight. Shocking sight again is an alliteration. He mentions the shocking sight of the battlefield that was full of dead bodies of the soldiers rotting in the sun. <clears throat> Through this image, the poet attempts to bring into consideration the indignity in the way the soldiers lay. They are reduced to mere status of an inanimate object. There is no dignity, no glory in war, only misery. Even after such terrifying aspects of the war, Casper regards it as a famous victory, which emphasizes on the ignorance of the old man about the purpose and result of war. Stanza 10. In this stanza, we come to know who was fighting against whom. Duke of Marlborough was the English general. He was the commander of the British forces in the Battle of Blenheim. Prince Eugene and Duke of Marlborough represented Britain in the battle and defeated the French at Blenheim. Caspar sang praises of the men who brought the famous victory to the nation. A confused Wilhelmin ex exclaimed that it was a wicked thing and wondered how her grandpa could sing praises of such a bloody war. For the first time in the poem, children, please notice this. For the first time in the poem, we see a disapproval of the false glory of war. And this disapproval has been brought forward by a little child, the granddaughter Wilhelmin. By shutting the little child up, Caspar goes on to repeat the same thing. The war for him was not a wicked thing as long as it was a famous victory. Again, Caspar quotes that it was a famous victory. It is obvious that the old man is hiding all the destruction and agony caused by the war by repeating these two words. He seems to be afraid of breaking the romantic ideals of war that have been so carefully brought up in his mind. Stanza 11, which is the last stanza of the poem. Many people praise the Duke for having won the war and Caspar recalls this, remembers this with some delight. Peterkin then anticipated on the very purpose of war and what it led to and what good comes out of such misery. So the second time the glorification of war is questioned is by Peterkin. But the old man did not have any answers to such questions. All he knew was that it was a famous victory. This remark heightens the sense of irony in the poem as, in spite of such cruelties and casualties, the old man sticks to his illogical belief that the war brought victory to them. The poet repeats the line, but it was a famous victory. We have seen this line in almost every stanza. This line is an epitome of irony. The war was fought over a trivial dispute at the cost of lives of thousands and thousands of soldiers. The only thing inevitable in a war is destruction of life. Inevitable means something that is very sure to happen. That is destruction of life and property. Victory cannot bring back all the lives which are lost during the war. Hence the poet questions the purpose and need of war. Thus the poem after Blenheim successfully conveys his message War is futile and should be avoided. To conclude, let us understand that fighting a war does not benefit either party, the winning party or the losing party. Nothing is won 
when the war is fought everything is lost there is loss of life you cannot bring back to life all the soldiers who have given who have died in that war all the destruction that has happened the loss of money property cannot be brought back so basically we must understand that we must learn to live in peace if there is any disparity if there is any uh, you know argument let us sit and discuss it let us talk about it and let us thrash it out meaning not physically but talk about it and resolve our differences fighting is not the answer 